Well, good morning, church. Uh, I've got the pleasure of speaking to you this morning about spiritual rest. You know, when we look at the series of this spiritual fitness that we've been going through at the moment, everything that's been talked about demands an action on our part, a participation in trying out for ourselves individually. You know, if only there was a way to get fit through somebody else doing all the work, you know, that would be an absolute dream come true, you know, but it just, it just doesn't happen that way, does it, you know, and I've learned that whenever God speaks to me, it always demands a response on our part to either change or improve my spiritual relationship with God, which can only be a good thing because after all, he is the all-knowing being of heaven and earth. You know, surely if anyone knows best for us, it's our wonderful father in heaven. So today I want to talk to you about spiritual rest. Now, now what does spiritual rest mean? You know, we all know from the Old Testament in Genesis 2, verse 2, that on the seventh day God rested from his works. You know, what was the reason for this? You know, I don't believe it was because he was tired or needed to sleep at the time. But if we read Exodus 16, 23 to 25 in the Old Testament, you will see that God is teaching his people about the importance of this rest he wants us to actually enter into. Now, it didn't matter what you did at the time or how important you were, God commanded everyone to rest on the Sabbath. You know, the Sabbath is a day set aside. This day is purely to honour and worship our God. So in Exodus 20, verse 10, it says, but on, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor stranger who is within your gates. Then in Exodus 23, verse 12, it says, six days you shall do your work, and on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the son of your female servant and the stranger may be refreshed. Then jump into Exodus 31 verse 15, it says, for six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. Now I'm guessing it's not only a good thing to just do but it's actually a commandment that God wants us to follow for a reason to benefit us. You know when you work 30, 40, 50, 60 hour week in whatever job or activity that you may do there is a need for different types of rest and these, these types of rest may be physical, it may be mental, sensory, creative, emotional, social, but most important, importantly, it would be spiritual rest. You know, it's a good thing to note that I can only rest from what I am doing. If I am not doing anything, say, physically, then the need for physical rest is completely pointless. No, in the same way God's kingdom works. If I'm not spiritually active, there is a need for that spiritual rest. Because without that spiritual rest, how do I outwardly reveal God's nature to others? So what does 
Sabbath day mean? Because in Genesis 2 verses 2 to 3, it says, And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Now much of the Bible was originally written in Hebrew and the Hebrew word translated from this verse and he rested which is in verse 2 comes from the the root word Shabbat which in English translates into Sabbath which later became the official name on the seventh day for the seventh day sorry of the week and then the word sanctified in verse 3 that comes from the root word and I hope we're going to say this right Kadash, which literally means to set apart. But the first place the word Sabbath from the Hebrew verb Shabbat, meaning to rest from labour, the day of rest, that is used for the seventh day is in Exodus 16 verses 23. And this says, then he said to them, this is what the Lord has said. Tomorrow is a Sabbath rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will bake today and boil what you will boil and lay up for yourselves all that remains to be kept until the morning. Now, what does the dictionary describe rest as being in a, in a natural sense. It says things like rest is to be quiet or calmness. Tranquility is it's also described as or peacefulness. Another one is is serenity or maybe stability it also says in the dictionary. And and in the Bible God has granted or created times for people to require this type of physical and peaceful rest, which is so deeply needed at that specific time. You know, when we look at the life of, of Joshua in the Bible, in the book of Judges, God has either delivered his people from their enemies and given them rest or granted them peaceful living to those who, who look to God alone and kept his commandments, it says in one of the verses. You know, this is, this is what I would instinctively say is the natural meaning of the word rest. Yet Jesus talking in Matthew speaks of a different type of rest. More than just a, a physical rest, more than restoring your body and bringing peace for a space in time, Jesus, Jesus offers up an endless resource that as believers we are to operate from if we are to enter into his rest and his presence. You know, don't you love it when it says enter into? It makes it feel accessible to everyone. And the great thing is, it is for us all. There's no one to be missed out on this. You know, I believe as we read the scriptures, God does something inside of us that restores and renews what was lost or broken in our lives. You know, as I read these verses now, just, just allow God in and digest what he's saying to you personally this morning. You know, let it restore God's purpose for you. Let it renew the fire that has been robbed from you within. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 11 verse 28, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and I will give you rest. You know, in Matthew eleven twenty five to 29 in the New American Standard, 
it says, at that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for this way was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come to me, Jesus says. So Jesus says all, not some, or if you fancy, fancy it and see if it helps. And there's, there's the promise. He says, I will give you rest. You know, have you ever wondered that when your life has been turned upside down, and the list of jobs has just increased tenfold. You know, stress levels are through the roof. But now is the time to have a time out with God because that will help get everything done. You know, let's, let's be honest. But, but listen to what he says after. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Learning from Jesus, reading and talking to God, knowing that Jesus is gentle and humble, knowing that he is, he is in us and we are in him, must begin to register in our minds and transfer to our souls, which is how which is how I find that rest. You know, we, we have all heard the story of Jesus being asleep in the boat while the storm rages around him. You know, is, is this because he is humble or gentle? Not particularly, but is it an outward sign of being at rest? Have a supernatural rest while all natural rest and peace has been robbed around him all having panic attacks while Jesus is at rest in John 14 verses 27 it says peace I leave with you my peace I give to you not as the world gives do I give to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid you know rest in is relying or putting your trust in someone or something other than yourself. In Psalm 116 verse 7 it says, Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. You know, those of us who either control or shall we say that are strong-willed, struggle with the thought of resting in and relying on someone else. You know, as we're, we're used to doing everything ourselves or controlling every step and direction that we want to go in. Yeah, but Romans 14, 17, it says, for the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, when we rest in God, in his presence, things start to happen. It's not just peaceful. Yes, it's, it's the lifting off of burdens, but, but there's more for us. You know, when I enter into God's rest, I am entering into the kingdom of God. You know, there is this is this is not a small place this is not a place lacking in absolutely anything the bible says that everything is possible there is every possible resource is at my disposal when i enter into god's rest you know this should be a time of transforming my mind 
and my heart and my soul aligning myself with God through the Holy Spirit. You know, so in this time, firstly, I should be being transformed. My earthly thoughts and my thinking are being replaced with God's vision, his thinking, and with that brings the life-changing reality of living from his kingdom and what that brings. You know, in this time, we remind ourselves of the testimonies we have read in the Bible and the testimonies we have seen for ourselves. You know, we remember many of God's promises, things like, I will never leave you or forsake you. All things are possible for those who believe. Another verse is like, my peace I give you. No good thing will he deny those who walk uprightly. And the list goes on of all these powerful promises that God has given us in the Bible. You know, no longer do I rely on my own strength, trying to force a situation, fighting something that has come to distract or destroy the work that God is doing in my life and in your life. Secondly, his desire becomes my desire to go and release his presence. You know, natural peace is the absence of either war or conflict, like God gave Joshua in, in Judges. Heavenly peace is the presence of God. You know, in Psalm 37, verse 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. You know, yet God tells us to trust in him, rest in his presence, wait upon the Lord, to seek him first, that all things are possible if we rest and rely on him. You know, when we lay down our strong urge to be in charge and believe that when God says, I will never forsake you or leave you, we take God at his word. But also there are other things that stop us entering into God's rest. And they are things like lack of faith in God's word or rejection or unbelief in his word. Uh, there's also lack of, of knowledge to God's word. Maybe it's, it's unbelief in living with God or there's a hardening of heart through, through maybe sin. You know, what it, what it means to cease from your works when we stop depending on our, our own wisdom, our intelligence, and the manipulation of, of events in whatever we do, and we rely wholly on the Lord. You know, when we, when we cease from our, from our arrogance to think we are something and learn to give God the glory in everything that we do, for without him, we can do nothing, and we are nothing at the end of the day when when we cease to fret and worry and learn to relax and rest our mind at peace peaceful and calm knowing god is in control his will must be done in our lives you know we serve a living god who promised never to leave or forsake us you know who also said no good thing he will deny those who walk uprightly those who trust in him are not to be put to shame. You know, in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 10, it says, Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When God tells us that when I am weak, I will give, you will give me strength. We may know these verses, and have experienced them, but telling someone or sharing the, them with someone who is going through a tough time can be challenging. But when we personally 
are going through a tough time and God speaks to us directly. This is when God's kingdom opens up for us and we enter in to that rest. You know, that's when it becomes life changing. You know, yes, God speaks to us through the uh, through others. Um, and there's the importance of, of reading the word individually and to understand, to gain that knowledge, to gain that rest. You know, to live in this rest that God reveals to us in his word and in his voice just requires effort on our part to be with him, to receive, you know, to drop down our barriers, lay down our, our desire to be in control, you know, our, our desire to plan, you know, forgetting about what what's happening later or right at this specific time, but allow God, the Holy Spirit, to enter into our lives and allow ourselves to freely walk with him you know god has has given us a life-changing opportunity to to fullness in this lifetime and an eternity with him you know why wait to experience god's rest his peace or his his kingdom until we enter into heaven when we can experience it now on a daily basis but to do this we need to enter into this type of relationship it requires changing our thinking and dropping our own agendas to fully believe in his. You know, letting God take over, bringing peace into every situation. You know, we'll find a love for things that we did not see before. You know, our constant flow of joy because the weight of this world has been lifted from us. You know, what type of rest is this wonderful spiritual rest we can enter. You know, and, and we are able to experience this rest through daily of receiving the Holy Spirit. Staying clear of religiousness. Let's not say one thing yet be doing another. You know, a life filled with faith spilling over into your everyday life. You know, I just want to share this last passage and the heading is, is the promise of rest. It's in Hebrews 4, it's verses 1 to 8 and then 10 to 16. Now, I'm not going to read it all as there are so many important things that God is saying and I don't want to, to lose the, the focus. But so, so maybe after when, when you get time, read through the whole of Hebrews 4 and pause during each verse just to try and understand what God is, is saying to you in there. But Hebrews 4, just verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creator hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You know, to rest in the Holy Spirit and allow God's word to search our hearts is going beyond our natural thinking. But it's when we start to see the revelation in God's word that only the Holy Spirit can reveal to us. It is powerful when God speaks to us or reveals something as it becomes life changing. It shifts our countenance from a place where, where we are maybe panicking or fear is setting, we are stressing and all of a sudden God speaks to us and we get to a place of complete rest. You now look at, at what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 10 verses 4 to 5. Now having in mind they've heard, they've heard the gospel it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down a stronghold, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity 
to the obedience of Christ. When we are connected to God and filled with the Holy Spirit, being obedient to God's word, then we can find that perfect rest, that perfect Sabbath. You know, we must all want to experience this perfect rest that God has promised us this morning. The rest that Jesus experienced in the boat. You know, chaos all around. But you remember in the middle of it all, the Lord your God protects you. Remember in Hebrews 4 verse 12, because if we become like the people in, in Romans 7 verses 19 to 20, it says, For the, the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I do the very thing I do not want, I am no longer the one doing it but sin that dwells in me. We will constantly be living in unrest, knowing what is good for us, yet never allowing Hebrews 4, 12 to actually work in us, connecting with the Holy Spirit. You know, when the word reveals through the Holy Spirit and starts to pierce the skin and digs into areas, making us uncomfortable and go in places we have hidden from everyone, cutting out the stuff that's going on in our lives that only the Holy Spirit can. You know, you may, you may ask, how is this perfect rest? It doesn't sound good to me. You know, to gain that spiritual rest that Jesus walked in and talked about, we have to go through this personal painful and, and private experience with God for us to fully understand and live in that rest that God has promised we have to go through this individual time with God there is there was always going to be instruction to follow something to practice or a to-do list you know if if we want to go further in our journey with God we have to push ourselves to be vulnerable to him. You know, quick fixes are wonderful, but God has something far greater in store for us if we will be determined to keep believing and find that rest he has promised. Let me just finish with these seven thoughts. These are seven signs that you have rested in God. Number one is you are full of hope. The second one is the impossible seems reasonable. The third is you live in peace and you don't worry. Your speculations are positive. And the fourth one is you like yourself and even rejoice in your weaknesses, knowing that when, when and where you are weak, God is strong. The fifth one is, you are quick to forgive and you freely give others grace and mercy. Then the sixth one is, you are confident and thankful. And lastly, the seventh, you believe in others and give them the benefit of the doubt. I just want to finish with this verse. It says Psalm 37, verse 7, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who carries out the wicked schemes. Rest in the Lord and wait patient, patiently for him. God bless you all.